Welcome to the only region in the world where monks, farmers and artisans have developed the unique technique of transforming pasture flowers into cheese flowers. It may be hard to believe, but I'm already 800 years old. My story began in the monastery of Belay, founded in 1136 by the canons regular of Prémontré, where I was first mentioned in writing. The canons cleared the region's woodland to enable them to develop agriculture and dairy production. At the end of the 18th century, the canons were evicted from Belay by French revolutionary forces. However, they kept on making me in farms belonging to the monastery. In 1981, the invention of the Girolle by Nicolas Crevoisier brought a new dimension to my story. This ingenious device substantially simplified my preparation, which formerly consisted of shaving me with a knife. Nowadays, Metaphil La Girolle Limited continues to produce the original Girolle in La Joux, Switzerland, according to the inventor's design. In 2001, I was awarded the status of Protected Designation of Origin, AOP. This guarantees all members of the industry, such as milk producers, cheesemakers and affineurs, comply with very precise specifications. It assures traditional manufacture at a very high quality level. My upland region is mostly situated between 700 and 1300 meters above sea level. My homeland knows how to maintain its original character. Rich aromatic grasses and herbs grow on this poor limestone soil, giving me my unique flavor. This botanic diversity also has a positive influence on the composition of my fat content, which is naturally rich in omega-3. From spring to autumn, cows graze on luscious herbal pasture. During winter, they're fed hay from the same fields. Milk producers make the most of the mountain pastures. My production method satisfies all the relevant animal welfare, social and environmental requirements. Over 200 family businesses in my region operate according to these demands. My specifications insist that the cows graze on pasture during the sunny season. Silage or any chemical additives are strictly forbidden. Very stringent welfare requirements ensure the animals are always in good health. Only top quality milk, which is subject to strict controls, may be used in my manufacture. This ensures the milk producers receive one of the highest prices in the world for their product. This all contributes to my unique character and what makes me a healthy and authentic product. The tools necessary for my manufacture have evolved so much that today they face a challenge arising from a paradox. It is a question of responding to increasingly strict food standards while respecting my original cheesemaking principles. Today, just like before, the main stages of my preparation are delivery of the milk, rennette curdling, heating, pressing, brine bath, maturation or aging. As ever, all that goes into making me is milk, salt, rennette and natural lactic or cheese cultures. Every day my mountain milk is delivered to the cheese dairy for processing within a 24-hour period. This means I can still be made using unpasteurized milk today. Other than slight skimming, my white gold is not processed before it is poured into a copper vat where the cheese-making process begins. Before being made into cheese, my raw materials are subjected to very strict quality control procedures. My milk is then reheated to a temperature of 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. Once this temperature is reached, my milk is enriched with the natural lactic cultures necessary for my maturation. Rennet is then added. This 100% natural enzyme makes my milk curdle in about 30 minutes. The last moments of the curdling process are crucial. All the experience and know-how of my master cheesemaker are required to determine the exact moment at which my mass can be cut. When the green light is given, the graceful dance of the cheese harp can begin, under the watchful eye of the master cheesemaker. It only takes about 10 minutes to reduce my cheese grains to the size required. This operation separates me from the lactoserum, also known as whey. After the curd forms, I continue being mixed and gradually heated to a temperature of up to 53 degrees Celsius. 
This ancestral technique, also used by the canons, contributes to my conservation without having to resort to chemical additives. I am then transferred into molds with the aid of cloth or a pump. They are used for pressing me and later give me my cylindrical shape. Then the cheesemaker provides me with a casein mark, showing my dairy and date of birth, so that I can be traced back to my origin. I will have been pressed and turned for a whole day. The lactose that I contain will be entirely transformed into lactic acid by the cheese cultures. So I am naturally lactose-free. The following morning I am removed from the molds, which gave me my distinctive shape of a little barrel. I am still fragile and lack some consistency. I am then immersed in a brine bath. During spending a maximum of 24 hours in it, I lose a little more water and absorb the salt which is necessary for my consistency, preservability and the formation of my flavors. I continue my adventure in cellars where the final and longest stage in my development starts, my maturation or aging. Placed on spruce boards in an environment with a relative humidity of 90% and an average temperature of approximately 13 degrees Celsius, I now find myself in conditions that are ideal for developing all the subtleties of my flavors. My appearance and taste both developed during the course of aging. I'm brushed regularly with water and salt. Nowadays, this elaborate procedure is sometimes carried out by automated equipment that reproduces the traditional methods to perfection. It allows the master cheesemaker to use his time more productively doing other tasks. But he's still needed when it comes to monitoring my maturation. After aging for two months, an independent commission determines whether my quality complies with the requirements of my specifications. I am firstly judged on my external appearance. Next, using a cheese plug, the experts take a sample, enabling them to evaluate the presence of holes, the elasticity of my body and my taste. I'm then submitted to a test to determine if I'm suitable for shaving or curling. The experts give me a mark, which is used as a basis for my classification. Above all, I will find out if I can be sold with the designation Tête de Moine AOP. I spent at least two and a half months in the cheese cellars. From four months on, I can be labeled Tête de Moine AOP Reserve. And now here I am ready to be sold. My specifications require me to be sold in the form of a whole wheel, half wheel or as freshly prepared rosettes. I have become so popular that I can be found for sale almost everywhere in the world. I'm exported directly from Switzerland to more than 40 countries and distributed at almost all points of sales. You can enjoy me the moment I arrive where you are. To shave or curl me, you must do this straight out of the refrigerator. My consistency is ideal. To make the most beautiful rosettes, don't apply too much pressure to the curler and keep the pressure even. Shaving modifies my structure and increases the surface area in contact with the air, which enables me to release all my flavors. Maintaining over 800 years of history, all those involved in my production at the heart of my region of origin are committed to this every single day. My farmers, cheesemakers and affineurs do everything in their power so I can continue developing while still respecting this purest of traditions.